death, death by the Pretty Things. The Pretty Things were like the uh, one of the best bands in England in the 60s that didn't quite make it as big as they should have. Um, a lot of people ripped them off. Led Zeppelin ripped them off. Everybody ripped them off. Geniuses. Uh, they wrote this little song called Death, which I just thought was the coolest thing in the world. Uh, it's just so, um, it's a tiny little song and it's really sad. The guy sings. The guy who sings it sings it in a really high register. I sing it in a low register because I wanted to. I wanted the people to hear the sound of the cigarettes, you know. And uh, it's annoying. I smoke, um, uh, but the the original one is it's almost religious in a way. It's just or, or old timey English, you know. You can see them singing it at a, at some sort of little English graveyard at a funeral for a proper old English gentleman. Um, and I just thought the whole thing had a like a really cool creep factor that would go nice in the middle of all these really loud rock songs on the album. So I wanted to have like kind of a midpoint where everything uh, calmed down for a little while. There's a song for your situation. It's like. Uh, I, that one's by a band called Jerusalem, who has got to be one of the coolest sounding singers I've ever heard in my life. And I tried to sing as well as him on this, but I couldn't. I couldn't do what he does. I don't think anybody in this in this millennium can do that anymore. There's some old secret to this old '70s, late '60s, early '70s singing, where the guy on the record is like. And it's not metal, it's pre-metal. It's, so it's not high. It's kind of, I think he's trying to sound like an old blues guy, which everybody tried to back then. But, you know, it tries hard. He's, like, you know, he's a 21 year old kid, probably from Ohio or something, or Texas. You know, a white kid from Ohio. He's not gonna sound like some 82 year old Bayou black blues singer guy. Um, so he's trying really hard, and it just cracks me up every time. It's like, these these songs are are excellent, insane, funny, and uh, poignant at the same time. It's a, their their attack of it. Um, I wanted to just try to get some of that on this, and and I loved it because it's such a small song. I mean, not small in size, but small in length. There's nothing to it. Um, they didn't bother to put much of an intro there's no real guitar break in the middle i think the thing clocks in at about 201 two minutes and one second which is excellent and uh it's based off a riff that you can't go wrong i mean but that riff you know if you turn that riff around or make that riff any other way it'll probably sound like every cool rock song ever written it's got the chords and i love it it's trash um yeah that song is so awesome it's trash he's basically telling his girlfriend that you know that she dumped him and that she's lying about him and uh it's like every teenager's nightmare you know when your partner just like bah and uh he's uh screaming it through uh, some sort of echo device and he's just so upset in the song that his voice is breaking up so it's like i just can't believe that it's <laughs> nuts yeah and all against this like super rocking bah, 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 with fuzz guitar and everything and uh it's like that is garage rock like one of my favorite garage rock songs of all time garage rock as opposed to proto metal, I understand. Take everybody to school here. As opposed to proto metal, the Raz Rock was still based in a pop sensibility. Um, so they wanted their choruses and they wanted their background vocals and guitar break and everything to come in at a short amount of time, under three minutes, um, and sell the meaning of that song. And. Uh, a lot of the meanings of those pop songs, or garage rock songs, was Broken Hearts. So this is an ultimate Broken Heart song. And uh, he's mad. You can hear him sing. And I'm mad too when I sing it. 
because it hurts to sing like that guy. <laughs>